in this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called perfect squares. So um, basically, we're given an integer n, return the least number of perfect square numbers that sum to n. So in this case, you can see we have a perfect. So a perfect square is an integer that is the square of an integer. So in other, in other words, uh, it is the product of some integer with itself, right? So for example, 1, 4, 9, 16, they are all perfect squares because you can see here uh, 1, right? In this case, 1 times 1 is 1, right? 2, or in this case, 4 is 2 times 2, right? That's a perfect square. And we also have 9, and 9 is 3 times 3, right? And we also have 16, which is 4 times 4, which is a perfect square, right? But 3 and 11, they're not, because in this case, you can see we, if we have 1 times, or 3 times 1, right? In this case, is not a perfect square, right? Same thing for 11 as well. So in this case, we want to find the least number of perfect squares that add up to n, right? So in this case, let's say n is equal to 12. In this case, the least number of squares that we can add is basically 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is 3, right? So in this case, we have three uh, perfect squares that add up to uh, 12, which is the least number of perfect squares numbers, right? We can, of course, we can have like 12 is equal to like 1 plus plus 1 plus plus uh, 1 plus 1 plus 1, right, dot, dot, dot. We can also have, like, you know, 4 plus 8, but 8 is not a perfect square, right? We can also perhaps have, like, 4 plus 9, right? So that's 13, so that's bigger than 12, so that's not going to work. So in this case, we can also have, like, 4 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1, right? So there are a bunch of 1s, but in this case, the minimum, right, the minimum... Uh, perfect squares that we can add up to 12 is basically 3, right? We can have 4 plus 4 plus 4. So that's basically the shortest. Uh, so that's what we're going to return, which is 3, right? And then let's say if we have 13, which is the example that we just looked at, right? So for example, 13, if n is equal to 13, we have, you know, like usual, we have 1 plus 1, dot, 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 right? We can also have like 4 plus 4 plus 4, which gives us 12 plus one, that will give us 13. Or in this case, another way we can do it is we can basically have uh, four plus nine, right? This will give us 13, which is basically the minimum number of square values that add up to n, which is, you know, in this case, it's just gonna, two. It's just gonna be two, right? Um, so in this case, you can see uh, the constraints is that n is between one to 10 to the power four, right? So in this case, how can we solve this problem? So to solve this problem, we know that um, in this case, we have to try with all the combinations, right? Like, let's say if n is like equal to 13, in this case, we want to see, okay, well, let's try with all the square numbers. Maybe like we, just like how we did it in the integer break problem, right? Maybe we can try to, you know, decrease the n by one or by four, right? We can try with decrease, you know, DFS by decreasing 13 by four or by one, by nine, right by 16 in this case we realize that 16 is bigger than 13 so we don't do that right so what we do is maybe we can you know dfs right like for example for our first dfs function like maybe we can have like a function right we want to figure out the minimum uh square values right so in this case what we can do is we can have like maybe one plus fn 12 right we can do that we can also do for example uh you know, four, right? Four plus fn of certain fn of nine, right? And we can also have, in this case, uh, let's see, we can also have nine, right? Plus fn of four, right? So in this case, here is minus four, here is minus nine, here is minus one, right? We can try with all those, you know, path that we can go down to, and then for function nine, right? In this case, we want to get the the total number of perfect squares for uh, make up to nine, right? The minimum perfect squares to make to make us to make up the sum for nine. In this case, we can also have like, you know, minus one. We can have like one plus f n of eight, right? We can also have um, in this case we can also have let's see four, right? We can also have like minus four, so four plus f n five, right? Or we can also have like minus nine, like we can have like nine plus fn of zero. And we know that fn of zero 
is going to be what is going to be zero, right? Because in this case, we pretty much at the bottom of our recursion stack. So we can say that safe to say that these ones they're they're not going to work because here we have one because the minimum number to make up, uh, you know, for uh, square or in this case if n is nine, the minimum number to make up this value is just one, right? Because it's just nine itself. So maybe we can just backtrack to this function, right? In this case, you can see, of course, we will also have a cache as, as we go, right? Of course, like we will cache the value, right? In this case, you can see function nine, this will give us one, right? The minimal number to make up nine, right, is one, right? It's just, the minimum is just one. And then for the minimum for making this value, we know that four plus nine is gonna be 13. So there's only two values. So one plus you know the extra four there so it's two values so we're going to return back you know two right there's the minimum uh perfect squares to make up this 13 is two of course we also have to do a dfs down to this path as you can see for example maybe like one plus fn of 11 right or one or maybe like four plus uh fn of Eight, right so you can see we have to do a DFS all the path but in this case you can see like maybe eight or maybe four it was already computed before then we maybe we can use some kind of DP caching to cache this right so that's what what we're gonna do is we basically gonna cache the data as we go right if we already compute for right if we already uh, know what's the minimum right minimum number of uh, what's the minimum number of uh, square values to add up to n now we're current n right if we if we can be able to cache this as we go, we can basically improve the time complexity, right? So you can see here, this is basically how we did it. We bought a top-down approach that I did. And you can see here, this is our cache. Cache is equal to new integer n plus one. We do a DFS to figure out what's the minimum, you know, minimum, uh, right? The minimum perfect square numbers that sum to n, right? In this case, what we're gonna do is that this is our base case. If it's n is equal to zero, we just return zero. If it's not, if it's already cached before, we can just return a cache value. Otherwise, what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate it, right? In this case, you can see i is equal to one, right? So i times i is less than or equal to n, right? So we're starting from one, uh, we work in our way. Uh, in this case, if i times i, right, is less than or equal to n, then we're gonna continue, right? So two times two, right, three times three, four times four and so on and so forth, right? So in this case, we're basically just gonna loop through. For each and every single iteration, we're gonna see what's the minimum number of, you know, what's the minimum number of perfect squares that, you know, add up to n, right? So what we're gonna do is that it's either gonna be, you know, max value that we have so far, or it's gonna be, you know, we're gonna do a DFS function, try to figure out, you know, what's the, you know, what's the perfect number of squares for, you know, for this, right, for this, right? if we can be able to get the minimum number of perfect squares for this plus one if it's smaller than what we have so far then we then in this case the minimum number of perfect squares is going to be you know what we have here right so we're going to continue to iterate through try with all the combinations um cache the value as we go and then at the end we're just going to cache the value for you know current uh n right and then we're going to return that and then back to the main function, that's what we're gonna return at the end. So you can see this will give us a time complexity, right, of n times uh, square root of n, right? Because in this case, you can see we're iterating uh, square root of n number of times, right? We, let's if, if n is, let's say, is equal to 12, uh, so we're gonna have one, four, right? So in this case, we have one, we have four, we have nine, right, we have, uh, the next iteration is going to be 16, but 16 is bigger than 12. So you can see that the this iteration right here is basically just going to be in, uh, in power, uh, square root of power of n. Oh, sorry, square root of n, right? And then we also have to you know do this iteration, right? Try to find the uh, try to find all that single each and every single value, right? And cache that. So that will also you know t from from one to n. So that will be uh, n times square root of n right so that's going to be the time complexity and then space complexity is basically just going to be uh, big of n right so that's the top down approach and then the bottom approach basically we're, what we're going to do is we're going to work from the bottom to the top right 
So you can see here, we are starting defining our base case, right? If it's zero, it's gonna be zero. And then we're gonna iterate from one to n. And then basically for each and every single iteration, we're gonna say cache at num is the max value. And we're gonna try with all the single combination, right? We're starting at one, num is equal to one. And then what we do is that if i times i is equal to you know num, we're gonna continue, right? We're gonna try with each and every single combination, right? If, if num is one, then what's gonna happen is we're gonna say num one minus one, right? We already cached that. So if it's zero is zero, right? Plus one. So we're basically saying we're, we're trying to retrieve the computer value and we use that computer value to compare, you know, what's what's up with the current, uh, you know, the minimum number of square, perfect square values, right? To make up the current value, right? So that's what we're basically trying to do. And the time complexity here is basically just going to be linear, right? And then here you can see clearly that the time complexity here is basically linear, right? We go from one to n, and then here we're going from, uh, in this case, it's gonna be square root of n, right? So it's gonna, time complexity is gonna be n times square root of n, and then space complexity is also gonna be big O of n. So there you have it, and thank you for watching.